live. So thanks everyone for joining us to uh, another issue of our Intune Barbershop. I'm Josh Gatewood. And I'm Kevin Vanover. It's great to see you. We're, today's session is going to be session two of Remote Help. Josh? Awesome. And we're going to talk about Intune Remote Help, right? How you can mitigate security risk, improve efficiency, support your workers wherever they're at. And today is more on the setup side. So uh, when it comes to setup and when it comes to software, the first thing we need to talk about is licensing. Absolutely. Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> so one of the things that we need to do for remote help is we need to get it licensed. Now, activating in, uh, remote help in Intune is a tenant-wide setting, but it is a per-user license. So in option one, that is where we have the Intune suite where remote help is included in a bundle SKU, but it has many other things. And then option two is just the remote help add-on license, which is at $3.50 per user. Now I have added a link down there at the bottom in that page, so you can go to there and you'll be able to see you know, the breakdown in pricing and whatnot, but that's pretty much it. You just need to make sure you license it per user. Now there is some benefit to having the Intune suite per se. Josh, do you wanna talk on that? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you just want a milkshake, right, that's you can get it a la carte. <laughs> but if you want to have like, you know, the full hamburger and fries, like sometimes bundling it together, you can actually save, you know, not to be like Jake from State Farm. But uh, it is like when you have like the full Intune suite, there's like the endpoint privilege management and some other features that get added on as well uh, instead of just buying them a la carte. But yeah, remote awesome. help by itself, you can you can get. What about like, uh, I guess, like networking? Like what would I need to tell my networking team to set this up? Yeah, so on the networking side of things, you have endpoints, and your clients need to be able to talk outbound on port 443. Now, that traffic is going to be encrypted with TLS 1.2 as well, but I did provide you with a link in the PowerPoint slide right there. If you click on that link, it'll give you a breakdown of the FQDNs that your clients need to talk outbound to. So it's important that you make sure if you have any proxies, firewalls, things like that, that, you know, you make it available to them. And, you know, if you're, if you're, decrypting uh with proxies you know the encrypted traffic it's probably not a good idea you might want to just uh, whitelist that if you can um, i've seen that where it's caused problems in the past the other part yeah. that i wanted to call out here was the oh did you have a question no oh, no the, okay. i've also right. seen the the tls inspection uh wreck havoc within two yeah. so. absolutely okay so the next part of this is the firewall exceptions I went ahead and I, you know, brought in a breakdown of the, the, the firewall exceptions you need to make. If you're using MDE firewall uh, on Windows 10, Windows 11, then you just need to make sure that you make exceptions for those. Otherwise, it'll cause problems for the application itself. Perfect. Awesome. So we've got licensing. We've got networking. Uh, what about how do we, is there like a client? What, what do we got to do to get it to work? Yeah, absolutely. Now, the client piece of this, <clears throat> this is just a download so you can go download the client. I'm a little disappointed in Microsoft that they didn't make this app available in the app store, if you will. Instead, we've got to go download the application separately as an EXE. Then we've got to wrap the application in an Intune uh, Win app format so that we can then upload it into Intune and then deploy it. That is great. You know, it, it gives us some capabilities. And to be honest, I think the remote help actually might be in the enterprise app management portion, which takes us back to that Intune suite license versus the a la carte. But in the general app store, it is not there. So I wanted to take you into Intune really quick, and I wanted to show you um, what I did here to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this in, pull it in. Let me know if you can see that. Good? Yep, yep, we can see it. Okay, so in the App Store here, or in the Windows apps, uh, I'll scroll down, and I'll show you that I've already loaded it in here because I was labbing it out before. There's the Remote Help app for Windows. But I wanted to show you, um, if you go get the Content Prep tool, um, you'll be able to download that and then you'll be able to wrap the application. So I was going to demonstrate for you. Um, I've already taken the uh, the task of wrapping the application in an Intune Comp Prep Tip tool, um, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So you go get a Windows app, Win32, and then I'll go ahead and do select. And then from there, I'm going to select the app package, select the app package file that I've already wrapped in the uh, Intune Win app format. And then I'll go to my C drive where I select or saved it. And I'll go to Intune, and then I'll go to Remote Help, and then there's my Intune con uh, wrapped application. I'll say OK here, and then this is where you're in, you know you're then presented with the options you know for the Win32 app. Um, so this is you know where you put in the publisher Microsoft. You can put in the app version there, um, and I'll probably just put some 
fictitious data in here real quick. Sorry. Um, That's the same uh, stuff I put into. <laughs> <laughs> and so test, this right? is where you'll put in the yeah yeah you'll put in the um the install commands for it here uh let me do, 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 do. yeah i'm gonna put in this one right here i wanted you to be able to see what i used in my lab to get this set up you definitely need that quiet switch for no sure words. and then here's the uninstall okay um, and it just accepted terms on both of them. Uh, make it available for uninstall. We want this to be a system behavior. Um, may it for, for start, I'm just going to do behavior-based return codes, um, and then we'll do next, and then we'll select our architecture. I'm just going to select 64-bit. I don't see a reason to do 32. And minimum operating system, 21H2 is where I want to go. Whether it's Windows 10, Windows 11, doesn't matter there, but 21H2, I believe, is where remote support, remote help became a thing. And then we'll use a manually detection, manual detection rule. We'll add this. All right. And then just we're going to do file. And what I did here is I just did the um, the install path. So it's going to be like C program files, uh, remote help. And then um, I just wanted to uh, call out remote help.exe. And then I just selected the file folder must exist. So let me show you what the finished product of that looks like. But that is essentially where we went. And then I assigned it to my test group. But I'll go back out here to the one that I've already created and show you what that looks like when it's completed. Now it's going to it. That's the beauty yeah, so of a demo. Let's, we watch the dot <laughs> races. That's what we do, right? Um, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, there we go. So manually detect and then C program files remote help. That's the folder I'm looking for. And I just told it, hey, make sure that it exists. And so I'll oh, go back, 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 back. Detection Report. rules, I'll edit this. There it is. And so it popped up there. So yeah, C program files remote help and then just remote help.exe. I'm just looking for the file folder that exists. That's going to give me back a good return code that it go ahead and went ahead and installed correctly. And then from there, I just scoped it to my my test group and it pushed the remote help out out to those. And you can see if I go back to the apps, I had some successful installs with it. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, got to load more. Remote help. Da -da. There we go. So I successfully oh, yeah. installed it on three devices. Love so it. So good yeah. stuff. And so once once it's Intune wrapped, you can also have like the supersedence and de dependency if there's like a new version, so that you can you can use that. Um, and then you also get the, like those built-in analytics on the installs. So we've got the license, we've got the networking, it's installed. What if I just want to delegate like my help desk? I don't want to have like my tier three admins having to be remote help. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, so for that, um, let me see if I got this here. Uh, yeah, RBAC. Um, so role-based access control. So if you go into uh, your administrative uh, tenant administration and then roles, you can create a custom role and you're going to be looking for this remote help app and you want to then decide, do I want to give them elevation? Absolutely. That's going to help you with UAC. Um, view screen, unintended control. That's something that is not available across the board. Um, I think that one I'm not 100% sure on, so I'm gonna have to owe you on that. But or other one is take full control, and that's essentially where you know I showed you in the previous demonstration where the user can specify yes or no. They have to go ahead and allow the helper um, to have view screen full control. It's not something that they can do without the user's consent. So that sort of helps mitigate from a security standpoint. Yeah, the, the unintended control, like, so for, we looked at the Windows app, so Android has mm -hmm. its own app, but Mac is via a browser, so that's where, Correct. like, the unintended control um, piece, that's where it would, like, break down. All right, so we've got scope now. Uh, let's uh, let's add another layer, because we're going for that defensive okay. depth. What about, like, uh, conditional access? What can we do there? Okay, yeah, so conditional access was a unique experience for me. Um, I, I didn't see it um, when um, I went to try to add uh, the uh, service principle for it. So I did a little bit of research on it, and you have to go and actually register or call it, a, you basically register a new principal service um, to it, and that's the app ID. So I went in, I connected to Azure. Um, you have to import the module Azure AD, Azure AD Preview, then connect it to it, and you have to log in with global administrative privileges, of course. So then you create the new principle, and then let me demonstrate it that for you real quick. I'll bring my Intune tenant back over. That's, that's really cool. I didn't know you could do that. 
I didn't either until I, you know, I was like, hey, it was like, oh, wow. Um, so if you go into devices and then we're going to go into conditional access, I went ahead and created a policy for us out here so we could take a look at what it looks like. And there it is, remote help, conditional access policy. So I targeted this to all users um, and the target app, that's where we're going to see the remote assistance service. So um, that service was not there uh, prior to me um, adding it in. And so you had to go out and I just searched for remote and it popped up, there it is. So I added that as the app that I'm selecting this for. And then the conditions were, um essentially that i'm just uh i was just targeting uh windows at this time um and then the the grant controls that's where you're going to say hey require multi-factor authentication that would then prompt them when they open the app to, with that modern auth they got to put in their their username and password or if they have authenticator then they're going to get prompted with the uh numerical value they have to put in when it shows up in authenticator they have to put that code in then it'll go ahead and let them open up the app and it was a pretty cool experience yeah, Not no, that's that, that's definitely awesome because once you have like the different conditional access signals, then you can, you know, determine this is what I'm going to have as a requirement in order to use remote help. You got to be on a compliant device because remote help does have a compliance warning once you're first yes. connecting to it. So, or do I want a session control? Do I don't want people remoting in and then forgetting that they're still in. So do I want to like, you know, after like an hour, you got to log back in and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely uh, where it's like kind of like ties all together uh, as we move more towards like the, the conditional access front. So that's Absolutely. fantastic. Cool. Awesome. All right. So uh, thanks for joining everyone today. So make sure you like and subscribe. If you've got any comments, feel free to, um, you know, just look, mention a comment, anything that you've like had a problem with Intune Remote Help or uh, something where it's like been a win to where you've been able to, you know, go over the shoulder with this software uh, and how it's helped you out. So uh, thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.